So hey y'all, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video was yet again another Trauma Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're gonna be talking about Young Miami basically being done. What this means is when it comes to the perception of Young Miami from the general public, her affiliation with Sean Diddy Combs has turned a lot of people off and has made her career start to become obsolete. I haven't seen Young Miami get this much bad press since she came out. And it's crazy that someone who people pretty much say isn't a good rapper, isn't as talented as her bandmate, kind of lucked up into the position that she is in didn't get as much backlash for those facts versus where she is now with her career. Recently, music producer Rodney Jones accused Diddy of sexual assault in his latest lawsuit and Young Miami was also mentioned. Now I do want to say that she isn't mentioned in direct detail to being directly guilty of anything that was alleged. She was brought up in the capacity to say that her cousin did try to make sexual advances towards Rodney Jones. Nonetheless, the fact that her name was even brought up in a lawsuit is enough to really turn people off off, and it did for me. I actually liked Young Miami because I felt like she was naturally funny. She actually had a really good podcast show that if you tune in, her personality takes over and her antics and creativity with it is still entertaining. And even when it comes to the music, the City Girls make music that isn't to be taken so seriously. So who she is naturally did fit with it. But to see where she's landed, there's a valuable lesson with all of this. In addition to the aftermath of her career suffering because she gambled her career and has lost. Now I'm not going to read the entire lawsuit because I'm not going to lie. The last video I did detailing things in regards to Cassie, I had to wait like two weeks to post it because it was a little bit too triggering for me. But I did research this and looked at other videos from other commentators to know that anything surrounding Diddy is just not good. That man is a music mogul quite all right, but he is a monstrous, malicious, manipulative magnitude of malarkey. And it's honestly maddening how much malevolent motion he has. I hope y'all like that alliteration. Y'all know I be trying. But for real, Young Miami has gotten herself caught up in something that she can't come back from. From, and it's really sad when you think about it. The reality is, I think Diddy preyed on her because she doesn't come off that smart and she is outwardly concerned about materialism, money, and being someone's sugar baby. And those things are things that have gotten her to where she is now. So I wanted to talk about this and I really, really, really wanted to talk about the lesson in all of this because it's something that a lot of us young women need to discuss as to me, it doesn't look too good on the surface level and for the future of Young Miami's career. So I've broken this video down into three overall main talking points. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So my first point is how Young Miami ended up here. Young Miami to me is the case of someone who never really had the guidance, self-esteem, or instant common sense to know what she's supposed to do with her newfound fame and riches. And I could be wrong, but to see somebody start off so revered, so promoted, so likable, but then make a choice to associate themselves with someone who everybody knows is not a good person in business, in relationships, in interpersonal relations, literally in anything, it really does baffle me that this is her reality. Let's take it back. I remember the first time I heard the City Girls. F That Naker was one of their first debut tracks. And as much as I'm not really the type to spew that type of energy naturally, it does resonate with a lot of women who feel adamant about standing on business, leaving a man where he's at if he's not equipped to satisfy you in many ways, whether it's sexually, spiritually, or financially. And this became the City Girls theme of making music that championed independence and autonomy for women, even if it is covered in vulgarity and ratchet antics. My favorite song from when they first came out was I'll Take Your Man, not only because I like the sample that they use, but I just felt like the song was a bop. I heard it for the first time in college and I was at a probate and everybody in that auditorium was going crazy. And I'm like, what is this? And then when I went to search up who the city girls were, I kind of fell in love with the idea of rap groups coming back, rap duos, the new age salt and pepper type of approach. And I felt that it was new enough for my generation of Gen Z and relatable for a lot of young women. Now I'm not a city girl by any means. I'm definitely more of a lover girl, but I did have my era where a man couldn't get a burger out of me. And then let's not forget that Young Miami and JT were featured in Drake's song, In My Feelings, which was a 2018 summer anthem. This really established them, maybe not as the best hip hop lyrical artists, but in addition to hip hop that for a while wasn't there. We hadn't had a rap duo of females since like the 90s that were super popular, and it was interesting to see everyone's admiration for them. I mean, two hood girls from Miami being promoted to the mainstream and getting co-signed from a lot of big name artists. And I believe both JT and Miami got to really excel through a lot of that. Not to mention they were under the label of QC, which was a black owned label out of Atlanta, who was again pretty new and broke so many records and expectations from people. And JT and Miami were a part of that surge. Their label poured a lot into them to be where they are and it's almost a success story that people weren't ready for. So both of them were on top of the world. I mean, they came out approximately in 2017, 2018. And this was even around the time where Cardi B was really blowing up and Saweetie was really blowing up, Lotto was really blowing up. And I'm referring to mainstream. You may have known about 
all of these people in your local city, but to the rest of the world, a lot of these people were new faces, especially for me. So female rap music was taking its initial stride into what it is now, and Young Miami and JT were a part of that. They were participants of new age female rap music and really revered even though they weren't as traditional. They were seen as urban and they were unapologetic about the messages that they were sending through their music to other women. And as time went on, they got bigger, they got rewarded, they received accolades, and they solidified themselves. Until Young Miami makes the decision to associate herself with Sean Diddy Combs. Now, let me say this. I truly want to believe that Young Miami is a victim because we all know what Diddy is capable of, and we all know that from what Cassie alleged in her lawsuit, it's not that far-fetched to assume that Young Miami got caught up in something that maybe she didn't realize would happen. But unfortunately, from her tweets and her demeanor and her over-the-top obsession with what Diddy can provide for her, even outside of music, I see why people aren't giving her that excuse. There's a lot of people that don't feel bad for her and don't feel bad that her career is where it is because I don't think women in particular can respect another woman who turned a blind eye to what was already obvious. It's no secret that Diddy is a bad guy and it's no secret that he doesn't pay his artists. He's taken royalties that didn't belong to him. He doesn't really have any musical talent. He has just associated himself with all of these people over the years to boost up his ego, his money, and his respect in the world. But when it's all said and done, he's truly no better than your average scammer. P Diddy 419. If you know, you know. So while Young Miami was at the height of her career, she associates herself with him. And I remember the first post. It was her and Diddy at a party. They were standing on a staircase holding hands and she very much so appeared to look like his girl. Not just a date to the event, but somebody who was romantically involved with Diddy. And let's not forget the initial reaction. There were so many women that said, oh, she's just having fun. She's just spending that rich man's money. She's just allowing him to trick on her. She's just enjoying being a woman and beautiful and attractive and enjoying the fruits of her newfound fame and relevance and it's no big deal. And people said, if you find anything wrong with this, then you're a hater who is jealous of the opportunity that Young Miami is getting. And I remember I made a video on this years back and I said I wasn't fond of it because it didn't make any sense to me that they were associated. And I felt that it was weird that someone who was notorious for ruining and sabotaging the careers of men and women alike would be booed up with Young Miami. Young Miami at the time, not really having any bad press, no scandals, nothing but fun bops and even having the respect for holding her band down while JT sat in prison for two years. She had so much positive praise and perception that it's literally behooving that she would make a choice like this. But I do think a lot of young women fall for the old okie doke of the rich older man who is supposed to be the sponsor for them and also take them out of their financial misery, their lack of love from the father who wasn't present for them, and the boosting of their confidence because they believe their relationship is exclusive. And if you remember, there was a little social media scuffle when at the time of that picture and that debut of Young Miami and P. Diddy, Joey Chavez, who was the baby mother to Bow Wow and Future, was also laid up with him on a yacht, kissing and seemingly being intimate. And I think she bowed out of that because she had a little bit more self-assurance to know not to be somebody's other woman, at least not publicly. And good call on Joy because she could have been wrapped up right in this and I'm glad that she knew that this was not the situation for her. So again, I wasn't fond of this union because I thought it was outright wrong due to P Diddy's reputation and allegations, but also I felt that why would a woman who already has the riches, the beauty, the career, and the social backing from the general public do something? Something like this. And also, if what she was looking for was exclusivity and real love, I thought that this was a dumb choice because I don't think Diddy is capable of doing that. The man already had multiple baby mothers, multiple kids, he's well in his 50s, he was dating Cassie for well over a decade. I feel like all of the proof was public even when we didn't know everything behind closed doors. So she unapologetically continued on in this relationship and she obtained some benefits through her show Carisha Please, as well as the envy from women who would like to be in her place. Say what you want, but there are thousands of women who envy and wish upon a star to be arm candy and the trophy wife to a rich man, especially one who is a billionaire. As time went on, we see that Young Miami actually was in a very non-monogamous situation. Diddy had a baby on her with a whole different woman who we had no clue about. And then there was the revelation of one of his other girlfriends named Gina, who Young Miami definitely had words for on several occasions. She taunted her, had people someone attack her, being that Young Miami is the bigger and more famous star out of the two, and even set off a series of tweets that were aimed at Gina. One in particular said, if I wanted you to eat my cooter cat, Diddy would have had you on your knees, ho. You a eater. And I remember everyone was gagging. They thought she ate Gina up. They thought she was the top dog or the winner of the internet beef. And Young Miami continued to parade her somewhat obsession for Diddy. And it was like she was trying to prove that she was the most down, the most loyal, the most excited, the most deserving of the number one spot in his harem of women. And it has now turned out to bite her in her BBL booty. These allegations within the lawsuit don't directly implicate her for anything in particular. But if Rodney is saying 
saying that he has indisputable evidence to implicate her, I'm going to err on the side of she definitely was more involved than what the public thought. She wasn't just a girlfriend. She wasn't just arm candy. She wasn't just doing this for publicity. She was down with the down and made decisions that probably affected so many other women. Now, I don't want to put any allegations out there, but to me, it seems like she had no problem recruiting other women to be a part of what was going on. She had no problem putting down other women who were already involved. She had no problem berating the general public for their concern. And she turned a blind eye and publicized something so toxic, knowing that on the inside, it was probably very ugly. That's why I say there is a chance that Young Miami is a victim here. And of course, I don't wish anything bad to have happened to her, but she has yet to say anything or allege that she's the one who was done dirty in all of this. It's funny how the tables turn when she was making comments about Gina and what Diddy had over both of them, but no one's talking about Gina. Gina is not listed in the lawsuit, so Diddy essentially promoted her as the number one girlfriend in all of this, just for her to be completely implicated when everything came crashing down. Cassie opened up the floodgates for Diddy to be exposed for exactly who he is, and the reality is everything that's done in the dark will always come to the light. Now moving on to my next point, the lesson. The lesson here is to show that everything that glitters is not gold, and that more women should have more self-esteem, more individuality, and more general couth to know that money, materialism, showmanship, and fame is not everything. Currency is not always correct. And what that means is whatever you're receiving in exchange for anything that you're doing isn't going to put you where you want to be, especially if you don't know if that money is dirty. Young Miami has tried to leave with this honestly city girl mentality, basically saying that money, men, purses, influence, and being a top dog girl means more in life than your respect, your common sense, your perception, and your dignity. And that's why I said in the monologue that I feel like she's a girl who really wasn't that smart enough to understand that everything that she's been able to acquire and attain through her career can come and go just as fast as she got it. There's a lot of young women who are so led by social media's push to require young women, especially those of us in our 20s, to be these beautiful high earning idols when in reality, if only people knew what your faves had to do to get to where they're at. Recently, there's been a lot of exposure with the entire Baddies franchise, everything that's happening over there at the Zeus Network. And what I'm learning is that a lot of these women are doing strange things for some change. A lot of these women who are propped up to be the baddest and most desirable girls in entertainment are selling themselves short to remain in their positions by having to keep up sexual relationships with powerful men, exploit their lives, and honestly keep up a persona that isn't even true. These girls act as if they're the most confident women who have the pick of the litter. Whole time though, they're getting peed on. Like when Young Miami released that information, there was a sector of the general public that shamed people for shaming her. There was a sector of people that said that we shouldn't be kink shaming another person for their sexual choices. But the reality of it is it's not being done because she likes it. It's being done because the person who she's with has no respect for her. So much so that she's now going down downhill with him, not only in court, but in the court of public opinion. I feel like I've said a lot of things on YouTube that have always come into fruition, but I don't know. I have a lot of common sense when it comes to the things that I view and the perception of the reality of things when you thoroughly look at it. I get the surface level look of this union, but I think when you look deeper, you realize it for what it is, and that's all I've ever tried to let young women know. There's a lot of young women who are mesmerized by their lifestyles and their accessibility to not have to work as hard, but they're working hard. A lot of these women are working hard to appease a man who will never give them what they really want, which is respect, love, and companionship that is truly genuine. A lot of this stuff is very conditional, and Diddy has shown that more than once. Like, did we not watch Making the Band and how he treated those artists and the things that have come out since then? So many people have recalled how bad of a person he is. But Young Miami felt that she was above all of that, because she's a city girl who is praised for spilling a lot of the despicable actions and being so wrapped up in things like greed, pride, wrath, sloth and pretty much the whole list of the seven deadly sins like are we not reading our bibles like for real wrath uncontrolled feelings of hatred and anger young miami would literally lash out on people who contested her relationship with diddy even though a lot of concerns were very valid greed the excessive desire for material things everything she raps about is pretty much deep fried in materialism but even outside of entertainment because obviously sometimes that stuff is just for show her quickness to call people broke or insinuate that she's paid and has all of these different riches showed her greed when it came to materialism. Pride the inflated sense of accomplishments. It's like because she attained Diddy who has billionaire status, she was very prideful about that. Even so, where she put down other women who were pretty much in the same situation as her and showed her infatuation for Diddy. And also lust, the unrestrained sexual craving. Of course, that's in the music, but again, outside of entertainment, the way how she presented herself to Diddy as this sexual siren who will do anything he says and leading with her sexuality, all while making a lot of positive claims about her sexual talents. You can even throw sloth in there because it's laziness and lack of effort 
effort. And I feel like where she is now is divulging from her career's original premise and putting her career on the back burner and being unenthusiastic and somewhat lazy and lackluster with music to obtain and maintain her position as Diddy's girlfriend. The lesson to be learned, ladies, that you should never sell yourself short for the sake of money, fame, attention, and materialistic items. You can't take any of that stuff to the grave with you. You can only be remembered for what type of person you are. And now a lot of people are going to remember Young Miami as someone who gambled her career for the sake of materialism and attention that she didn't really need. She had already done so much to acquire her success without Diddy, and it's unfortunate that she's led a lot of young women to believe that the grass was greener on the other side, when in reality, there's a lot of weeds, insects, and dirty dirt. My third and final opinion is, is her career over? I know the title says that Young Miami is done, but I feel like this is going to be contingent on how she handles this and how any of the legal situations play out in court. There's a lot that we don't seem to know. Again, the claim is that there is irrefutable evidence regarding Young Miami and her involvement with Diddy and all of his escapades. I know that the lawsuit really says that Young Miami's cousin is at fault for putting herself onto Rodney Jones, but there's no way Young Miami's cousin would be able to have the opportunity to do so without Young Miami's involvement. I think in terms of the general public's perception of her, that is forever tainted. She has said too much and her tweets allude to someone who is not a girl's girl and was selfishly going to put her own desires and greed over what is right. And the fact that we can assume that she knew more than what the public did about what type of things Diddy was doing or into, and this was even prior to Cassie putting out her lawsuit, it's literally things that make me go, hmm. She did somewhat try to separate herself from Diddy by relaunching and coming out with this whole yams era. Her efforts to rebrand really didn't go over that well because I don't think anybody really cared. Of course, she has her core fan base, but the detachment from her and JT is way too evident. And we all know that once a band breaks up, going solo doesn't always go well. It can be hit or miss. If you look at bands like One Direction, of course, Harry Styles went on to have a great career, but some of the other band members, we really don't care about. And then even when you look at a group like Fifth Harmony, Camila Cabello went on to have a very huge career, but some of the other ladies really don't make as much noise as they did when they were in a group. Shout out to Normani, by the way. I heard she's dropping soon and I'm excited to see what she comes out with. And then when we think about JT, it seems like JT has been very calculated in her moves, which is why we've seen her release some solos and associate herself with different people in the industry while Young Miami has been out here somewhat tainting the brand and causing this alleged breakup. And that's really unfortunate. These two ladies made a lot of bangers. They were on top. They were so revered, not only in urban media, but I think they did cross over into mainstream market where their fan base was pretty diverse. So outside of her involvement with Diddy, the band was already suffering because of this. And I think the public can see that. I don't think people have the confidence that Young Miami can stand on her own. And it's crazy because she just rolled out the Yams era just a few weeks ago, just for a few weeks later to be named in a lawsuit that does not make her look the best. If there's more information that comes out and it's not anything that can either clear her name or make her look better in the eyes of public opinion, then unfortunately for her, I do believe her career is going to be where it's at. It's one thing to stop making good records or your sales go down. You can always go back to the drawing board and relaunch and come out with more music. But being tied to one of the most demonic and notorious names in entertainment is seemingly unforgivable. And the general consensus on Young Miami's career is going to show that in the near future. I wish her a lot of luck. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go follow me on TikTok. I've been posting on there. I have a new TikTok with me and my bae because it was requested. So I'm gonna keep posting some more content. For those of y'all that's a little nosy, it's okay. It's okay. Head over to my TikTok. The link to the TikTok is pinned down below. And lastly, do not forget to follow me on all of my social media networks. And I will see y'all in my next video. Bye y'all. It's all about me. Don't care about you. Yeah, I'm a 10 like five times two. Whatever I say, yeah, I gotta do on who, on you, on who, on you, on all. Hail the queen, QC. Yeah, she is risen. Presence is a gift, so I come with the ribbon. Internet told me stop rapping. I ain't listen to him. No, I really got more bars in the prison system. Right? Yeah, one beef, step into the kitchen. Murder flows, you can suspect. I am not the victim. Be queen, D's on that bitch like we with the pistons. Red cherry, red bottoms. I know how to pick them. Always got a secret plan. I don't do the fighting. Shorty is a secret fan. Yeah, she ghost riding. Brown skin, beauty. With a booty show time Go off on the tangent I don't need a cosign So baddies with me That I cheap about a dozen uh -huh. Hot yell straight up Out the microwave oven Gotta bring a chicken man Before you get to stuffing And this beat going crazy Snapping on percussion Chama at the top I'm the number one prospect uh -huh. Beat from Lakia When she slid on Cosmic Tell him come here Boo I'm trying to make your jaw slip I got no pics But I want to see your pockets Big glossy lips Trying them out like a faucet uh -huh. Beat chicken ease So I put them in a cockpit Cooking in the studio Call me dirty crockpit Gingerbread baby Running fast like Sonic It's commendable What's the ceremony but now it's a festival, new money now So you gotta move a decimal Pressure this was sweet and it's looking all congressional I'm so delectable, pull your queen card Cause mine is a collectible Better mind your business and stay up off my genitals Probably make them high cause my body's like an edible Wait, let me stop cause I'm trying to be professional Damn
know that's what y'all said when you heard that verse. <laughs> y'all was like, damn. <laughs> Respectfully, though. We on Victoria Island, like a gullah gullah, sun on my melanin, working on my color color bubble gum pink bitch. You are like hubba bubba, need my check Friday. I'm calling you a mora soca. She naked me, baby, I'm so fine. I dumb wine, be sweet like palm wine. Now when you get lay, I come say hi. I sit so, baby, no be long time. Go dumb on the beat, but I'm chilling with the smarty guys. Melanin militia on, go on with the army wise. Pull up with the fan, he gotta go. Now it's starry skies, big body, bad black girl, I'm looking party size. Breathe out, breathe in through your nose, through your mouth. Take it easy. Breathe in. Breathe out, man, I gotta catch my breath. Breathe out through your mouth. Uh, waist beast thrown on my body, this ain't Mardi Gras. Roll the dice, move the piece, got him looking sorry, nah. I'm a queen in Queens, fire than LaGuardia. You rap joints with bars, you're not hard enough. Stop with the excuse that you still just starting up. Battle in my team, man, you don't want war with us. Heat on the beat, I'm sounding like a talking drum. Ghost Rider girlies, man, admit that's where you got it from. Burr, it's getting icy out. Hot suya on your breath, that's a spicy mouth. Queen Chama with the waters like I'm Pisces now. Now I'm all up on his head, he trying to lice me out. No mistakes, we doing it precisely now. And it's funny how the haters trying to psych me out. And it's funny how the haters starting to like me now. And it's funny how my ex wanna write me now.